This is part three of the MateSmart Quick Start Tour. In this demonstration, I'm going to illustrate the differences between work orders and MateSmart's exclusive calendar based PM system. First off, I'd like to say that work orders can be used to do preventive maintenance or any other type of work for that matter. Work orders have all the bells and whistles you could ever hope for. We also have added a PM section under the gray oil can, which is much simpler. It consists of calendar based PMs that are rolled over when they're closed. You'll create the PMs once under the yellow oil can. This is demonstrated in a subsequent video. Once they're created, and closed, MateSmart will archive when it was closed, the time required, labor hours, as well as parts, who completed the PM, and any task completion comments. These are all archived into history. By collecting this information, you now know if PMs were performed late, the percentage of lates, the amount of labor hours for each equipment item and task, and the amount of labor hours for each person doing the work. You also have a total cost of parts. All of this data is available under the green oil can PM analysis. It can also be reported on with any number of different reports that are available. The other thing that occurs when we close out a PM is the PM is rolled over. Now this is different from the work orders because each time you create a work order you're creating new data in the system. With PMs you create the PM once under the yellow oil can. Thereafter when the PMs are closed they're simply rolled over after being logged into history. So what happens when they're rolled over? Well what happens is we pick a completed date this will become the new start date. The new due date will be the start date plus the interval. Intervals are always going to be in days for PMs. So let's take a look at this. I click the completed button and we'll notice that these did indeed roll over. and they have a new due date as well. Okay, what other differences are there with the PMs versus the work orders? Well, let's take a look at a PM list. Now the lower part of the screen here, framed in area, this is simply for filtering PMs. Filtering what shows up in the data grid. This framed in area here, the upper one, is used for closing out PMs. You can also change a PM assignment here, though this topic won't be covered in this video. Okay, so let's go ahead and filter this. I'm going to pick a piece of equipment. When I pick that, you'll notice that's the only equipment showing now. And I'm going to go ahead and print this into a PM list that I can assign out to someone. I go File, Print, Assign PM List, and you'll notice that a menu item is added dynamically to reflect the filter that's in place. When the Print Preview appears, we'll see that there actually is quite a bit of data available on the PMs. We have the equipment name, information on the equipment, in this case, this is a sequenced PM list, and that's optional. You can sequence them and have the task performed in a certain order, or at least listed in a particular order. You have your short task description, who it's assigned to, your start and due date. And we can also add unlimited text details to each PM record. So this could be many pages long. In this case, there's just three line items. Additionally, we can list a parts list. And these parts can be set to be automatically used from the system 
when the PM is closed. Alternatively, they can just be simply listed on the PM sheet. Okay, so this is a way to manually print the PMs. Uh, we have a, another video that illustrates how to have your PMs issue automatically through the print scheduler. In this case, you may want to have, for example, our technician here, Larry, he may want all of his PMs that are coming due this week to be issued every Monday morning at 8 a.m. You can set that up very easily in the print scheduler and that will manage that assignment from that point forward without any other user intervention. The print scheduler will also email PMs or any other report in the program based upon a schedule. Okay, I'm going to touch on a couple of options here. Quite a few options actually for a, for a very simple screen. Um, we have multiple formats. Currently we're using the format that has the most information on it for the PM. We also have a compact format and let's go ahead and see what that one looks like. In this case I'll just bring up all the PMs and we'll notice that this is a much more compact format. The details are not listed and this might be good for a daily checklist this particular format page breaks on change of technician. Okay, so other other options here. If we have a technician go on vacation, we can change the assignment temporarily and easily restore the original technician. As far as the grid goes and what's displayed in the grid, you have full control over this as well. You can size the columns, hide particular columns, sort columns, and much more. And then you can save those settings. So let's see how that works. I'll go ahead and hide some columns here. I think that's probably good. Maybe resize some. And then I'll go to my view, grid settings, save grid settings. And then if my grid settings are not turned on to use, and they are in this case, I'll need to check this. And from then on, this grid will always display this way. So as you can see, there are some differences between the work orders and what we call quick and dirty calendar-based PMs.